All right, so now we're here with the big question. What is MERN stack? So MERN is actually an acronym that stands for MongoDB. So the M in the MERN stands for MongoDB. The E stands for Express. R stands for React. And N stands for Node.js. And this is just the logo for uh, the four of them. So now let's talk a little bit about, you know, these individual technologies, not in depth, but just like a, a brief introduction. React, which I expect that you already know, is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces or the front end of your application. Powerful library. Um, it has so many, you know, packages that you can add on top of it to extend the functionality and build amazing applications. Node.js, okay, so actually in this, my slide here, you notice that I rearranged it. So I'm not starting from M, which is MongoDB. I'm actually starting from React, Node.js, then I go back to Express and MongoDB last. So we've talked about the front end. And the reason why I did that is because I expect that you're coming from a front end background. Even though you've watched some tutorials on maybe YouTube or even taking some other course on the main stack. This is how I think we should proceed. So we've talked about React. Now Node.js is a JavaScript runtime that is built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. So there's something called the Chrome's V8 engine. And on top of that engine, they built Node.js, which is a JavaScript runtime. All of this grammar I just, you know, talked about now. What is the purpose of Node.js? What's what what function does it add to our stack? Well, Node.js helps us to execute JavaScript code on the server side. So, when you build or uh, when you build an application and you maybe you're using a backend language like PHP or Java or whatever backend language or GoLang or whatever, Node.js gives JavaScript the ability to run and execute server side code, right? Let's switch to the next one, which is Express. Express is actually a framework that is built on top of Node.js. So just like we have JavaScript, and there are so many JavaScript frameworks that is built on top of JavaScript language. React, for example, although React is actually technically a JavaScript library, but there are some people that, you know, say it actually can be called a framework, whatever. But then there's Angular, there's Views, there's Remix. All of these things I've called now are JavaScript frameworks. Express, in the same manner, is a framework that is built on top of Node.js. So it's a Node.js framework. Just have it at the back of your mind that all frameworks aim to do is to make it easier for us to build stuff. Okay, great. The last on our list is the MongoDB. MongoDB actually stands for Mongo Database. Anyway, it's just a database. Now, this is not the point where I want to talk about the different types of database like the SQL database or the no SQL database. SQL actually stands for Structured Query Language. This is not the point where I want to talk about that because if you're coming from a front-end background and I start telling you that, look, there are different types of database. There's a SQL database. There's a new SQL database. Uh, one is one has tables. One is document-driven. I'll just end up confusing you. So after you've gone through this introductory part of the course, I give you an assignment to actually find out the difference between all the types of database. All right. Now let's just see how you know, the main stack works. Let's see the nitty gritty of how the main stack works. So ideally, what I expect that you know is how to build the front end part of an application. Yes, maybe you have some knowledge of how to maybe, you know, make requests to an external API, like the GitHub API, GitHub API, for example. So this is our React application here. Now what happens is we um, make some kind of request, oh, okay. So we make some kind of request to the server. Okay, so you see these two diagrams here, they both represent the back end of our application. So ideally the back end will contain Node.js, okay, Express, which is a framework built on top of Node.js. So let's just say Express and MongoDB, 
which is where our data will be stored so database so everything from here to this point so from the back end to this database here just constitute of the back end of our application why the react is the front end so ideally what happens is that you make a request to the back end of your application now you make that request via what is known as api endpoints so before we actually go ahead and you know proceed what are api endpoints so let me just show you one quick google that i did so i searched for api endpoint meaning and you see here an api endpoint is the url for the server or a service so essentially an api endpoint is actually just a url that we can make a request to as that's the simplest way you can define it but don't worry as we get into the project you're going to see what that is so let's continue so you have a front-end part of your application that makes a request to the back end via api endpoints now what happens next so that request needs to be assessed by this back end here all right so the assessment of that request can either be one of two things just to keep things simple so the first is the request needs to be authenticated so you want to check the user making this request is the user authenticated so that's the authentication aspect it simply means is this user logged in or not so if the user is not logged in and that api endpoint requires a user to be logged in then you send the, you reject that request or you throw an error another thing that can happen when you know that request is made to this api endpoint that is built with express.js on top of node.js is authorization so yes maybe the user is actually logged in in other words the user is properly authenticated is the user authorized to access that resource on our server so for example maybe the user is not an admin and that resource is set to only be accessed by an admin then you have to send an error to this user that look you are not authorized to access this api because you're not an admin so i'm, I'm sure you're beginning to appreciate what express on top of node.js does when a request is made from the front end of an application now what's the next step so let's assume that the user is actually authorized and properly authenticated then the express.js via this api endpoint makes a request to the database mongodb a request for that resource or that data that this user you know has sent a request for so it fetches that data from mongodb then it returns that data back to the front end of the application as a response and that response is usually in a json format then react your react application now displays that data you know on the screen of the user so this is a cycle of what goes on when you want to build a full stack application and i can actually tell you that it's actually a very interesting process so you're going to learn a lot in this project now before we actually head on to maybe the next part of the uh, course let's actually just see a quick example of some of the things we've discussed here so i have a link here and it's the api.github.com forward slash users this is an api endpoint remember we said that an api endpoint is just a url right for a server or a resource or a service all right so this api dot github.com forward slash users is a classical example of an api endpoint and as you can see i'm not logged in i just opened i just opened this url in my google browser or my chrome browser and you can see the data here so i have access to the data and this is json so this is actually json uh data that has been returned to me and i can do anything i want with this data it doesn't require me to log in which is authentication doesn't require me to have any admin status or any kind of authorization it's just a free public api however if i copy this api let me copy that and open a new tab where i then paste that in and then instead of saying users plural i'll just remove the s so it's api.github.com forward slash user 
and then I hit enter, watch what happens. Voila. So I get the message here, and this message says requires authentication. And then it gives me this documentation URL for me to read how to be able to use this point or this API endpoint. So you see what we talked about in the previous um, uh, lecture here, where we said that in this back end here that is built with Express and Node.js, this is where we perform our authentication and even authorization. So that's just a classical example of what we just explained here. So let's not spend too much time on the theoretical part of the project, which is important. Let's head into the practical aspect of this thing. All right, see you in the next one.